are back. It's part B. Part B. Um, so I'm going to uh, just update my little chart here a little bit. Uh, give me one second. Just cutting, cutting the list down. Okay. Uh, on ones I'm confident that you're not. All right, um, okay. we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to go. Oh, seven types, huh? Seven to, to, to hone it down from. So I'm, I'm at least okay. more than halfway there. I'm glad. <laughs> I really wish I could see which know, types right? you were. You can watch the video, so that'll give it some replay value. Um, okay. You can see the decisions I made when you said certain things, but sometimes it's like, you'll say something, but I'll have been thinking about a few other things and it'll just be the, the you know, it'll just be the final the final thought for me to, to make a decision or to realize something. So, um, all right. Um, let me ask you this question. Um, do you find that when you're in a social setting that you always have something to say or do you tend to be more reserved and wait until the right time to say something and then put it in? Yeah, uh, I wait for the right time to say something, but I usually have a lot. Well, it depends on what they're talking. Like if it's more traditional talk, I have things to say, but I'll wait for the right time and say it. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's say a group of people are talking about MBTI, then I'll wait for them to finish what they're saying so as to like not barge in. But of course I'll have a lot to say. So when I'm, like, I'll try to like take control of the conversation as much as I can, mm. but I wouldn't uh, be impolite. And... But if it's more of a traditional topic, then I would be there. Like I would just have a little bit to say here and there. And I'll just say it when the time is right. Okay, um, so um, would you say that uh, so um, How, um, hmm. could you see yourself being a good teacher? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You wanted to, you asked if I oh. could myself as a teacher, right? Yeah, yeah. So are you, you're thinking about it? Of yeah, of course. Okay. I love teaching. Okay. Uh, could, could you elaborate? Have you been a teacher before or are, are you currently a teacher of some kind? No, because like uh, I don't really have the credentials to teach anything, but like I, you used to teach my sister a lot mm -hmm. when she was in school, right? So yeah, I'm three years older to her. I would teach her maths, physics, and all that. I, as soon as I explained, she would like kind of understand it because I would explain it in a clear way with examples, kind of. And uh, when I'm explaining some like cognitive functions, like whatever I understand, if I explain it to someone, they like do understand, and I just love explaining it. So, okay. Or if I'm, like explaining like how to sing, like for instance, or if I'm explaining outer space and concepts regarding outer space, for instance, even that I would like, I'd really love to teach all that. And when I do teach, like, 
teach something to someone i they really do get it easily get up and never bored like i don't like think oh, okay i'm done no like i have to like explain until they understand it that's kind of there for me so so what is your what is your approach to ensure that they're going to understand what you're teaching them i'll try to give a lot of examples comparisons like i might compare something uh, difficult to something easy for them to understand like see it's like this so just think about it think of this okay. that way so in a sense are you thinking about it metaphorically like you're thinking about the pattern and you're saying you understand this pattern over here here's this pattern over here that is the same yeah kind of pattern exactly okay exactly good um so um let me um think about something here um Could you give me a metaphor for what it's like to be a teacher um, using like, using animals? Using animals. Yes. Okay, so uh, okay, so using animals a metaphor for being a teacher. Yes. Okay, so. so okay, let's say. There's a dog that really likes playing fetch, right? So you like throw the ball out, and it immediately comes like it's enthusiastically getting the ball back and giving it to you, right? Mm -hmm. Like you could compare that to a, like how someone if if someone asks me, can you explain this? I'm like enthusiastically grabbing information for satisfied, and I probably want to even give even more information. Sorry, you, you you you're cutting out periodically. I'm sure I'm sure I'm cutting out too periodically as well. Um, you said that you said that uh, they they are enthusiastic about the answer, and then it cut out there. Sorry. Okay, so I'll say it again. Okay, so uh, okay, so if there's a dog, for instance, that really loves playing fetch, you throw the ball, they. Throw ten balls. They immediately like enthusiastically grab every ball and give it back to you, right? Right. You could compare that to like how if someone asks me, "Can you explain this?" I'm like, uh, I'm enthusiastically going into my mind, grabbing all the information and giving it to them as much as they want, like even probably more than they want because I'm just enthusiastic about giving the information, yeah, even if they don't actually want the information. Kind of. <laughs> okay. Um. And would you say that um, that you have a good sense for knowing uh, what people will like? Yeah, I definitely do because, like, I'm not gonna go talk about MBTI to my mom, for instance, because sure, and any of that. Got it. Yeah, but I would talk to that. Talk about that to my sister because even though she isn't really interested in like MBTI or uh, Jungian psychology or any of that, she would like she likes listening to it from yeah. me. Like when I'm talking with passion, she kind of like smiles and listens to me. And uh, <laughs> even it. though she's not the person who talk about it, she likes listening to it. But my mom, she would just tune out, or she would just plain outright say she's not interested. So I'm not going <laughs> to talk to her about it. And my dad. I won't talk to him about it either because, like, he thinks he'd rather be doing something more useful. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it would you say that? So so would you say that people in your life think that you are not being practical? Mm. Or uh, in just or in just now, that but... or in just that <laughs> instance. Sorry, can you repeat that again? Sorry, it, what I mean to say, what I meant, the way I would say it is there are some people in your life that are more practical and you're you're seeing practicality different, like... Okay, so, uh, yeah, I definitely have, like, I've experienced that definitely, so I can give you a good answer. So, I would say that uh, now I'm not so sure maybe i'm a little bit more practical than when i was like a teenager but as mm -hmm. a teenager 
my mom always used to tell me like i'm very impractical for instance like i would dream about being a big cricketer and my mom would say madan see you're you're already like 14 and by 14 years of age other famous cricketers they were already like playing in state level sure, or country sure. level yeah, there's no way you're going to become a good cricketer she would say but i was i wouldn't care about that because i'm just in my dream Yeah. My dad also is kind of impractical in a way. He kind of envisions big dreams, and my mom comes there and she's like, "Hey, uh, you're like your dreams, the impractical. So you have to make it more practical." I would say my mom is a very practical person. Mm-hmm. Me and my dad are very impractical. My sister is kind of like in between. I would say. Okay. Um, practical herself, but she kind of like. doesn't talk about her impractical uh, plans so she doesn't really come past that as much okay uh let me ask you this um how easy or difficult would you say it is for you to keep your living space clean it is pretty easy for me because like i keep it reasonably clean like i don't i'm not a neat freak for mm-hmm. instance like i don't clean every single decimal on the floor it's sorry not decimal every dot on the floor but uh, i kind of keep it reasonably clean like i don't like keep a uh, unwashed clothes lying around everywhere for instance like my chair for instance i don't have unwashed clothes on it like most people my age like not most people my age certain people my age do like it's pretty clean my bed yeah. is kind of made okay okay Would you say I don't keep my bracket lying around just like that. I keep, need to keep it kind of clean like uh-huh. that so I do manage it. How um how about social interaction? Does social interaction drain you or energize you or in the middle or like how would you describe your relationship? It energizes me for a while and then drains me. How so how long does it energize you for? Um probably for like around Three to four hours before it starts to drain me. Okay, okay. And um, and would you say that when you go into a room that you um, how soon how soon are you able to pick up on the emotional temperature of the room? Is it right away? Does it take? Ten minutes? Does it take an hour? Can Can you repeat? Uh, how How long does it take you to figure out the social temperature of the room? Does it take? Can you do it right away, or does it take ten minutes, or does it take an hour? Like where Where How long do you think it takes you? Actually, I'm sorry. I can do that. I'm sorry. You just way. You just cut out. What was it again? Yeah, that's why I'm repeating. I so yeah, I kind of do it immediately. Like I'm pretty good at the, uh, getting the so social temperature of the room. Like but there is, there is one issue there though like i was like horrible like that when i was a little kid like you say like 7 8 6 year old kid i was very bad at that i would just like like let's say someone is like people in the room are like really upset about something i would just barge into the room happily about like a, sure. a computer game and i would talk to them yeah like, that, but that was only when i was like 7 or 8 years old right. even when i was a teenager i was pretty careful about all that I was like able to, and now I'm basically expert on it. So like, okay. I can immediately read people's uh, emotions and all that. Okay. So, um, what is it about MBTI that interested you so much, to the point where you were annoying other people about it? <laughs> okay. So what's interesting me is like it helps for people. Like for instance, if sorry, what was uh, okay, what was I, it? I it, it helps okay. what? Okay, so what's interesting about MBTI for me is that it helps lessen the mystery about people. For instance, like it solves the mystery of people. Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, if I see a person, uh, I don't know what they are interested in, what kind of person they would like, and all that. But if I know their MBTI type, it kind of solves it because, like, if I know a person is ISTJ, I know they are not going to be interested in talking about MBTI as much. As a person who is an INTJ, for instance, sure, like, sure, sure, sure. I don't have to like sit with them for hours. Like I don't have to observe them for days together to figure out what they like and what they don't like. Do you think that? 
do you think that your default position with people is to observe them or to engage with them when you're trying to understand their way of their personality and things like that? Observe, definitely. Observe first and then engage, yeah? Yeah, definitely. All right. Um, so I, um, I, I have a few more uh, questions, I think. Um, but I just wanna, I just wanna make some changes here. Um, I'm also gonna disconnect my VPN and I'm gonna see if that uh, affects the uh, disconnection problems that we're having. So give me one second, it's gonna switch over. All right. Let me know when you're back. Might have to refresh this. Let's refresh. There we go. I'm back. Uh, so let's see if that improves it. It, it might. Um, so let me ask you this question. Um, you mentioned that you were in the INFJ Males uh, Facebook group and then you left. Was there, uh, what was the reason behind uh, thinking that you might not be in moving, moving out of that? Uh, I thought I was not INFJ because like there was uh, this particular, there was like a guy in an, uh, another INFJ group who he would like, he was a horrible bully kind of person, but I thought he had some points like regarding how I am sensitive and uh, INFJs are apparently not sensitive because they don't have a fight. So I don't know. Because, kind of said because they what? Like apparently INFJs are not sensitive because they don't have a fight. And oh. only the horrible INFPs, the dumb INFPs <laughs> have a in their own sensitive fan case. Wait, so. so that guy's, so his logic made sense to you and then you pulled out of that or what was the deal? Yeah. I, I've read uh, certain websites which say like FI users are very sensitive. So I sure. thought like, okay, maybe he has a point and I'm just mistyped. So I just I kind of didn't want to bother the real INFJs. So I, I mean, I, I think that any type can be sensitive to be honest, but it's the sort of degree that, they're, that they are, their cognitive functions are going to let you in on that or be out in the open with that. Like extroverted feelers, their sensitivity is going to be more out in the open kind of. And introverted feelers, yeah. their sensitivity is often going to be more internal. But if you're a higher FI user, you it may be more apparent because you it will be affecting your decision making at the higher conscious level, you know. So you can see that kind of. Um, but um, no, my my experience with INFJs, including myself, is that um, they're actually pretty sensitive people. Uh, just. Um, uh, yeah, so I don't think it's a, just an INFP thing. Um, I think uh, any extroverted feeler probably is going to some degree have their emotions out there, but more likely in the dominant and auxil auxiliary locations, they'll be more more prominent. So feeling types, uh, feeling types basically. Um, yeah. <laughs> so and that's why I think they're called feeling types too. Is just the, when when you prefer introverted or extroverted feeling higher up you are more obviously sensitive, I think. Um, yeah. So I would say that it would be a fair assessment to say that you're a feeling type. Um, yeah, due, I would say that. Due to the level of sensitivity, emotional sensitivity that you have. Um, but I don't if think, you have yeah, but I don't think saying somebody is sensitive means that they're automatically an introverted sensor or an introverted feeler. So I just wanted to share that that thought with you. Yeah, yeah, that's what. So he would just go around bullying everyone, and uh, and one time I kind of stepped in when he was bullying someone. I was like, just stop it already! Like, why like stop it already? You're just going over line with all this bullying. And I was he he told me like, you're only defending them because you're projecting your own mistype onto them or whatever. So mm -hmm. he was saying like, I'm an INFP and. I, I'm protecting the other INFPs masquerading as INFJs just because I'm projecting or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it's really hard to know in over text what, what type somebody really is, you know. 
um, it takes a long, like kind of a long in-depth discussion, kind of like we're having right now, to uh, to try to figure it out. You know, I mean, it, it, it takes me an hour usually most of the time to figure it out or to even get close. So everybody who's on the internet, like you can't trust or know necessarily what type somebody is just by talking to them over text because they could be any type. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, let's see, I might ask you another question or two just to see if I can disqualify um, the, the type that I think you are. Um, okay. Uh, what do you think about uh, what? Do you play video games or watch movies very much, or what? I am pretty much a gamer. You're so. a gamer, okay. Um, what are your favorite uh, genres of games or types of games that you normally play? Uh, First-person shooters, RPGs. Uh, that's pretty much it, actually. Like I kind of have a very random, like, narrow selection of games. I do play third-person shooters at times, but uh, only if the story is kind of interesting because I really don't like the third-person shooting mechanic all that much. For instance, I like playing Max Payne, but I don't like playing GTA, for instance. Because sure. GTA, I think, too realistic, uh -huh. you could say. Yeah, GTA is realistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Because uh... of gangs, uh, gang wars, uh, going around the city and all that, like, it's too realistic in my opinion but max pain it's more like out there things sure, that might sure. not happen in real life kind of so uh -huh. it's more of story. i don't really like the shooting mechanic as much in max pain but first person shooters it's okay for me rpgs i really love because i'm like becoming a character and i can shape the characters interactions the way the connections are made that's why i love mass effect so much uh-huh um Would you say that? Uh, would you say that you are better at? This is going to sound really bad, but um, are you um, are you any good at like manipulating people? And by that, and may, maybe not necessarily in the bad sense always, but like. Are you able to get people to see things a certain way or think a certain way or you, do you get what I'm saying? Like move, yeah, move them like, in the direction that you want them to go kind of? Kind of in between because like I have a friend, right? Like she is from another city, but I do have a friend. She was like, she has horribly abusive parents. Mm -hmm. And I kept asking, I kept telling her, see you're all like 24, like 23. Why don't you move out of your parents' house if they are so abusive? And she was like, she didn't even know what to answer because that's actually true. So, but she was still kind of like stuck in her own loop, mm -hmm. kind of like, I'm so, it, my life is so sad. My parents are abusing me. She was just saying that all the time and she wasn't doing anything about it. So mm -hmm. I told her, see, you're already earning, you're earning more than me, more than me. And I'm sure you can manage a life by yourself. So just move out. Get an get an apartment or something and move out, and that took like a year of con one year of convincing before she actually moved out. So I don't know if she would have actually moved out if I wasn't there because she was like stuck in a loop. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But I was like asking her to. She finally moved out one day. Mm -hmm. But the same girl, she's like a woman. I don't know at this age. I don't really know what to call them. So yeah, sure. Okay, so this woman, uh, like she believes in what I would call unrealistic, like zodiac, uh, astrology and all that. She believe, she believes in witchcraft. She believes that her mom is using witchcraft to make her life bad. And I'm oh. like, those things don't exist. At least not in the way you think. Maybe right, they right. do, but I know your mom is not a witch. Sure, and sure. she's like, dude, you don't know. Those things are actually real. You just, you just don't, well, don't have the vision to see it, she says. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, you're just going in that pity loop and you're not doing anything to get out of it and tell her and she's like she's just stuck in it she, she says like it's because of her mom's witchcraft that her life is so bad and she doesn't really do anything about it so i don't know mm. i'm not able to convince her that uh, manipulate her into thinking that witchcraft <laughs> is 
not real. But sure. I was really well fitted into getting out of my parents' house, for instance. I see, I see. So and I was a, a friend. From, a bit of positive manipulation, right? Sorry? A bit of positive manipulation, right? Yeah, I could say that. And there was also like a, a case of how, like, I used to have a friend from Arizona, right? Like, I met her in one of these karaoke apps called Smule. I used to talk to her before. She was very suicidal, like kind of, she had a lot of suicidal tendencies. And as I was able to like, actually I was able to make her feel a lot better many times. Like she would all of a sudden message me on kick, that the messenger yeah. kick. She would message me on it. Mother, I'm just gonna kill myself now. Thank you for all the memories. She would say, and I'm like, no, 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 please don't do that. Of course, that's not gonna help. But then I would talk to her for a while and she'd be like, hey, I'm feeling a lot better now. Thank you so much, she would say. So. So um, do you do you think that you would um, be very comfortable in um, in a scenario like in in a work scenario where you are a therapist to somebody or you're helping to yes. them to you're kind yes. of guiding them to the the best version of themselves kind of okay definitely of course like that's why I'm doing psychology because I think I have a natural gift at it sure sure. Um, okay, so I mean, I think I um, I think I have an idea. So I'm gonna write it down here on a piece of paper, and then, uh, which is what I do when I do this, so you can see that I'm not changing my mind. Okay. Um, all right. So before I show you what I wrote down on this piece of paper, which actually has another type on the back of it, I should scratch that out. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I have this piece of paper here, uh, which has a type <laughs> written on this side of it. Um, so, what your best guess? What type do you think do you think you are? Uh, I'm guessing INFP. Okay. And it was. And uh, it's I, mainly because I, it's I, mainly because of the um, what the guy on Facebook said to you, or some other reason. Uh, mainly because. Uh, INFJs are so rare, so if you ask me, I would say I'm an INFJ. Oh, I think I lost you. Let's see if he rejoins. Come back, my friend. I was just going to reveal what happened. It's just you and me, YouTube viewer. It's just you and me now. What are we going to do together? Gooby's sleeping back there. Hey, buddy. Hello. Welcome back. Where are you? <laughs> oh, lost him again. Oh, he's coming back again. Hello. Hey. I'm, I'm sorry, my cat stepped on my keyboard and <laughs> switched the computer off. No worries, no worries. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, I'm like, skeptical. If you ask me, I would say I'm an INFJ, but uh, I'm kind of skeptical about that because people are also skeptical about people being INFJs. Because, yes, like, I, right. I'm so rare. because and, a lot of people claim to be INFJs. And... and also, like, they're supposed to be rare. So it's just like if I call sure. myself INFJ, I'm like making myself look like the rarest, most special person in the world. And I don't want to do that also. And also, like, right. people are generally skeptical about INFJs. So I don't. So that also makes me think you wouldn't have typed me as an INFJ. What type do you think I typed you as? I think you would have typed me as INFP. You think so? I think so. You would be wrong. I typed you as an INFJ. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, I actually ruled out INFP pretty early. Um, not not oh. right not right away, but I mean like definitely. Uh, I think during the first part, uh, I I ruled out introverted feeling and extroverted thinking axis um, not right away it was a tough it was a tough thing but I'll, I'll just say this I figured out extroverted feeling introverted thinking axis first uh, well yeah. I was able to disqualify extroverted thinking first and then I and then yeah, and then extroverted thinking doesn't make any sense to me what's I mean at least yeah. if I find like but T really doesn't make sense to me because I can't relate to anything any description of T. Right. So, yeah. So basically, um, 
basically, I, I was able to first dis discern that you were probably a TI user. Um, at first, I thought you were not probably an NI, NI dominant. Um, because of your answer to your difficulty answering my convergent question. But when it came time to talk about metaphors and to talk about patterns and whatever, I realized you, you are thinking in, the, in metaphors, but not in the same way necessarily that I am. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not an NI Dom. It just means I'm, I've learned different things or I'm thinking, you know, Anyways, you can't go on just one piece of evidence. You have to you have to look at everything. Um, so um, so for, first first I thought, well, okay, you're on the FETI axis, and then we did the break. So by by doing that, I was able to cut the list down by half, uh, and and then it was a matter of trying to settle on NI NI versus NE or SE versus SI if I could. Um, and okay. for the longest time, I thought you might be NESI, but then um, certain certain things that there were just a number of different things that you said that caused the, me to um, feel more strongly that you were probably NISE, and um, uh, not 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 necessarily the explicit things you were saying, like oh, I think about the future and stuff because. SI users think about the future too, so it, it's not yeah. like it's not like NI has the the corner on that, but it's a number of it's a number of different factors all kind of together that are going to make the difference. Um, so ultimately, it actually came down to ENFJ and INFJ. Um, oh. And a lot of people actually say that, like, like on Facebook when I'm like, I was even typed ESFP once, if you can believe that. Uh, um, anyway, I think you'll remember this. Yeah. Do you remember the post on MBTI Coffee House where I like asked, Anakin Skywalker is an ESFP? Oh, yeah, yeah. I I <laughs> because I thought I was ESFP. Like, I, uh, I was told by I was ESFP. So I was like, yeah. I'm just ESFP. So I asked, like, I'm so similar to Anakin Skywalker. I can relate to him. So I, sure, what sure, do you think? Sure. And you answered with a lot of memes and all that. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, um, it, it's uh, um, I think it's just a matter of like if you met an ESFP for five minutes and an INFJ for five minutes maybe you might not know the difference but um, but what but when you get because an INFJ is going to be very personable and very um, using extroverted sensing and you know an ESFP is going to be using a lot of extroverted sensing and my sister's an ESFP and she's uh -huh. A very warm, personable kind of person, which you you might associate with extroverted feeling, maybe. But introverted feelers are also very higher up. Fi users are also very accommodating, warm people. So um, you know. So yeah, it's, it's, the thing is, like people will make snap judgments based yeah. on a small interaction and the thing is like almost every type is capable of every interaction because every type uses all eight cognitive functions just in different order of preference so you're yeah. going to find ESTJs crying and you're going to find INFPs being taskmasters and you you know what I mean like there's yeah. there's there's a wide spectrum of behavior but what I'm trying to find is like what are what are you most comfortable in you know like the way that you're thinking or the way that you're processing information not necessarily based on strictly your behavior you know or like what what are you doing with your life or something like that so um yeah so i don't know if th if that if that helps you um feel a little more settled on it that's not really a conclusion i would come to um off the cuff like or or like um, you're the first person uh, you're the first person I've typed I think well definitely the first person I've typed during, doing this stretch who's INFJ but um, typically yeah typically you don't find INFJs as often but you know you do find, find them more often in the typology community so um, yeah. that's just because INFJs are very interested in typology and people and figuring things yeah, that's out what I tell people. They're like, 
see, there's this INFJ group, right? And there is this woman on the one of those INFJ groups, the INFJ groups, she's always complaining about how there are so many INFJs in the group and they're supposed to be only 1% of the population. So she's like, all you mistypes, please get out. She literally posted that once and I'm like, yeah. And then I posted, uh, like, and then I told her, see, INFJs are interested like, with their, since they're intuitives, they're interested in abstract stuff like psychology. And since they're extroverted feelers, they like to connect with people. So that's why you see so many INFJs uh, cramped into this group. And she's like, sure. And she didn't actually respond to me at all. So because I actually made sense there. And like, her, well, sorry. 1% of the pop, they, the world's population, if it is INFJ. Exactly, that's, I told her that too. That's she's still a like, lot of people. I told her it's still one of 100 people. That's a lot. That's right? like, uh, I don't know what the number is, 70 million people or something, or, yeah, uh, yeah it, it's a lot of people. So um, it wouldn't be surprising if more, when more people get internet, that the INFJ groups get bigger and bigger because there's just, there are going to be a lot of INFJs out there. Um, yeah, that's what I told her too, like, but she didn't have an answer, so whatever. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's... There are other types that are almost as rare as INFJ, but I mean, still 1% is still, you know, on, on, in, in a population of 7 billion people, that's, that's a, still a huge number of people. <laughs> and the internet, yeah. the internet brings us together. So, you know, that's, that's why. Um, well, uh, okay, so before we wrap it up, uh, sometimes I like to ask my guests if they have any questions for me. So, feel, do you have any questions for me uh, before we yeah, wrap up? Yeah, one question I have. So, sure. like, INFJs are supposed to have a side demon, right? Or do you believe in the eight function model? No, I, I mean, I, I think people interpret the bottom four functions differently. But go ahead and what, what is the question that you have? Okay, so if INFJs are a side demon, then, uh, like, I some like I told you I do like uh, learn things from the past sometimes right and I also sometimes very li like very minute number of times I might have felt a little bit nostalgic about things so yeah. if I have a side demon I shouldn't be doing that or... no uh, no uh, you can use all the cognitive functions and there are other cognitive functions that that aren't even in MBTI. Um, there, there, there are, uh, I think Jung believed there were like quite a number more than four or, or eight, you know, um, like there was a spiritual cognitive function or something like that. Um, so you, you don't limit yourself, don't limit your thinking is what I would say as to what, like we, we are using typology to try to categorize complex chemical and electrical yeah, behavior. <laughs> um, yeah. The reality is you are a universe of atoms. You have a unique universe of atoms that no one else has that works its own way and has its own biochemistry. And much like no two trees grow alike because they're in different geography and the, the sun hits them differently and they have different access to water and they're a different type of tree and on and on and on. So many reasons humans grow the same way. We may start off as, you know, two cells, one or two cells. And, and but then as we spiral out into our full, fully realized form, we have formed into something entirely unique. Um, so. I think all typology is meant to do is not to be a scientific instrument, but to be a measuring stick just to, just for practical uses, like just to get a better sense of who you are, get a better sense for the people around you um, and, yeah, and right. improve your communication with people. Um, in my, in yeah, my case, right. what's it? Yeah, that's exactly what interests me about MBTI too, because it helps me communicate. It would help me communicate differently with different people according to their interests. And like, yeah. For instance, I wouldn't go bothering an SI user about MBTI. Well, there are SI users that are definitely interested in MBTI. It just so I mean, there are ES, there are ESFPs and ESTPs that are interested in MB, MBTI. It's not your type isn't going to necessarily dictate how interested, you know 
necessarily. I guess that's what I'm trying to say is everyone's a unique individual and there might be tendencies, you know, like INFJs might be more likely to be interested in it, but it doesn't mean that an, an ESTJ isn't going to be at all interested in it. They might be, you know, um, so okay. yeah. So, so I have to imagine the ESTJ being interested in this, but I don't know. Well, um, I, I'm sure that they're, they're not as common because ESTJs are probably out living life, you know, and ESFJs and, um, it, it really depends on their own development as a person and, um, what their interests are and things like that. Um, so you can't, um, pigeonhole people necessarily. And, and okay. you know, so I'd say any, every new, every new person you meet is a new opportunity to meet a new person and to see things in a new way. Um, and yeah, you know, you can, you can listen for, for signs of what type they are and maybe that will give you some insight. Um, but and according to, according to CS Joseph, apparently you can find out a person's type in 30 seconds. <laughs> well, I think that, I don't think that's, I don't think that's a normal thing that you would be able to do that. But I do think that there are some times you could be in public and somebody could say something that you feel like strongly indicates that they are a certain type, but they, they could also be stressed at that point and not exactly. in, you know, and they could be in there, uh, in, in, having, a, uh, using cognitive functions they don't normally use. Um, yeah. so it's, I think it's, I think that's probably not true. I, I, I don't think, I don't think you can do it in 30, 30 seconds. Um, but maybe you can whittle it down to some degree or kind of get a generalized idea of what what general type somebody is. So um, I don't necessarily agree with C.S. Joseph on a number of things. Um, I, you might have seen I have a video on my channel of whether he's mistyped himself even. Um, with oh, I haven't seen it. I, I have to see it. Go, go look at my go look in my video history. And for those watching, I will I will link it right up there. Um, course but um yeah i don't know it's it's a funny thing it it's it's um it mbti was never intended to be what people make it out to be i think um it was yeah. in, originally created to help women in the workforce during world war ii to um find jobs that better suited their personality so yeah. that that should give you an idea of like what what it was created to do originally it was not intended to be a, a detailed scientific instrument and it was not intended to pigeonhole the people in your life. It was just intended for people to understand themselves better and to make better career decisions or whatever. So um, you can see kind of by that, by that, by its inception that yes, we're going to keep theorizing and coming up with um, more complicated ideas about what it, what it is and how it works. And that's just our nature to, tinker with things but if you if you think about how how it was created and that that should give you an idea of like the scope of what it's what it was intended to be used for so it's still interesting and i still want to think about it and i still want to work on it and and you know yeah. but but it, but it's just important for people to not take it too seriously in that sense you're still yeah. you're still you you're still you uh, you're an original um, the, the mold broke. Um, so you can think that, well, Hey, I'm a certain type, but you know, just because you read something in an article doesn't mean it's going to apply to you. And you you still have to critically think your way through life, um, from your own vantage point. And, you know, don't, don't use your type as a crutch and don't use it as a, anything to, um, hold over anyone else's head, but use it as a way to, make better relationship decisions or to understand your weaknesses better or something like that, you know? Yeah, which is why I kind of like hate it when people say, oh my God, sensors are so bad. They're so boring. They're so useless. And like, okay, where did you get that from? <laughs> I don't know. Like, that That's, that, well, that's an overgeneralization, I guess. 
Yeah. My, so my there best friend is a censor. <laughs> so. There was once, like, where there was a woman who posted on one of the IMG groups and she was like, this boss is horrible. She's been, like, he's been doing, uh, he's been yelling at me, all that. And the comments were like, yeah, that's because he's a censor. And I'm like, <laughs> this doesn't indicate censor at all. I think he's an ENTG, I said. Like, yeah. Yeah. Intuitives definitely, uh, Definitely I mean, can be that way. Intuitives are like never gonna yell at people. No, yeah, no, that's. Sure, that's not DJ is gonna be pretty angry if a lot of times. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're every type. Every type has a has a limit to their emotional. They have a point at which they're gonna start yelling, I think. Um, so some people are are way able to hold it longer and are way more reserved, but. Yeah, I mean, I've yelled. <laughs> I've been that, I've been that mad before, um, so <laughs> it's not a censor thing; it's a human thing. Um, yeah. No, I think I think um, you're you're right. There is some level of bias, maybe against sensing functions or dominance uh, in sensing functions. But um, I think um, if somebody's doing that, they're not using MBTI the right way, in my opinion. They're not uh, thinking about it the right way or something. They're 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 using it to distort their uh, their way their way of seeing people, probably. Um, and apparently, like FI people are FI users are extremely selfish and they don't care about anyone. A lot of people say that, and I'm like, no, well, no, I, I mean, he's a, he's a most empathetic type. So what are you talking about? I ask. So. Well, I do. I do think that lower FI users deprioritize everyone's feelings, their own <laughs> feelings, and other people's feelings. So, I mean, not all of them, but I mean, it, that is just a. That's a thing I've noticed. I have an ISTJ dad, you know. So, um, I think my dad is ENTJ. I don't know. I, he does seem show clear signs of ENTJ-ness, so I think he is that, maybe. And he kind of like doesn't give importance to feelings either, so hmm. yeah, I get it. Well, um, so for sake of uh, the video, I'm going to wrap the video up and uh, then we'll say goodbye. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Feel free to leave comments in the comments section and subscribe to this channel. And thank you again uh, for joining me, joining me all the way from India. <laughs> of course. That's awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess uh, see you in the Discord. I'll send you a link to the Discord. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording right. now. All right, cheers.